name is Eric Sagelbaum, sommelier at Le Diplomat, and today we're going to be talking about champagne. Most importantly, how to correctly and ultimately safely open a bottle. So, there's a technique to this that is not just about elegance, not just about celebration, but also really about safety, because basically, this is a loaded gun. We want to make sure that nobody's injured. In fact, over 80 people a year are injured from flying champagne corks. Some seriously. So that's something we want to avoid. Now, every champagne bottle or sparkling wine, this really applies to anything that's carbonated and pressurized, will come with some sort of a little tap. I personally don't like this because it's very messy and doesn't always get a clean open. So what I like to use is the knife blade of my wine key. Just make one slice around the base of the neck to the back, one slice around the base of the neck to the front, one slice up the neck, and what you'll get is a nice clean capsule ready for safe opening. Now, this is where it becomes very important. There are six atmospheres of pressure in this bottle. That is enough to send this cork flying like a bullet, and we certainly don't want that. So from this point in, the most important element of keeping this a safe operation is your thumb never leaves the top. A lot of people like to take the cage off. Really, not only is that an unnecessary step, but frankly, it's dangerous. So what we're going to do is we're going to place our thumb right over the top. We're going to find where the cage is twisted. We're going to bend that out and we're going to untwist it. And there's a great debate about how many twists are in a champagne cage known as a mucilage, if you really wanted to know the name of it. Generally speaking, some say five, some say six. Really, it's five and a half, but who's counting? So again, six atmospheres of pressure in this bottle. And what we're going to do is safely dispel that pressure out of the bottle without causing an explosive release. So what you should do is hold the bottle at about 45 degrees. And the reason for that is all of that pressure is going to want to release at the highest point of the bottle. If you hold it at 45 degrees, everything from the shoulders down is where all of this pressure is going to go. And the only pressure pushing out of the top is just from the top point here and up. So we can keep most of the pressure focused on the top of the bottle, not where the cork is. So once again, once you untwist that cage, your thumb is never going to leave the top. And here's a really important trick. You're not taking the cork out. What you really are doing is twisting the bottle and easing the pressure back to allow the cork to be naturally released. So we're going to wrap around the cage and the cage will give you a really great grip on the cork. Hold that ball up 45 degrees and with your other hand, just gently twist. And while you're twisting, you're just easing back on the pressure of the cork and eventually it will begin to come out. Generally takes a few turns and you just want to hold back as it continues to go until you get a sound like this. Just a nice, gentle sigh of happiness. Champagne bottles or sparkling wine bottles really shouldn't pop. If they pop, it means you're opening it too fast. And I know sometimes it's nice to have that celebration and that big loud noise reverberating through the room. But ultimately, a pop means it really wasn't opened safely. And that pop could be followed by a cork flying across the room. 